Trinity Exposed number 6. The Invisible God part 3. Let's look at a few more scriptures here. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. What? The King eternal. Um, who's that? Jesus. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. But that's the Father there. Jesus is an invisible, so it's the Father. You say, well, then see the whole thing. God the Father is the King eternal. Um, okay, then why is Jesus called King of Kings? We'll look at those verses here in just a minute. But uh, the other thing would be there, if this is, if verse 17, 1 Timothy 1 17 is speaking only of God the Father, then why does it say the only wise God? Um, is Jesus not included in that? Hmm. How about that? Let's see about the thing of the king here. You say, well, God the Father is a king and Jesus is a king. Let me show you the problem with that. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate. There aren't two kings. Potentate is a, potentate is a ruler. There's only one who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Uh, compare the two. The King eternal, 1 Timothy 1.17, the King eternal, the in, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. 1 Timothy chapter 6, the only potentate, whom no man hath seen nor can see. That would be because he's invisible. You understand? God the Father, the soul, is invisible. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, blessed and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, neither having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Did Jesus Christ have a bodily form in the Old Testament? Yeah, he did. Here's a description of it. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. They that believe in the Godhead are called and chosen and faithful too. Uh, we'll be there with him in the future, understanding that he is God, completely, fully God, not a third of God or another God or whatever else. One of three gods. What a weird belief. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness, fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his name written, well, excuse me, on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is King of kings. He is the blessed and only potentate. There are no other kings. So when you read 1 Timothy what chapter 1 verse 7 and it's 17 and it says now unto the king eternal it's speaking about Jesus Christ immortal invisible God the Father the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever amen you see there are different titles that are given there to the godhead he is king he is invisible 
In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One body, one God, made up of body, soul, spirit. If you're saved, you'll understand it. If you're lost, you're not going to get it. It's just as simple as that. 